Hello everyone, Anna here from EnglishLikeANative.co.uk. Thank you for joining me for this top class, fun-filled, upper intermediate English lesson. Wow, what are those? <laughs> they are compound adjectives. What is a compound adjective? A compound adjective is made up of two or more words that work together to describe a noun. These words should be hyphenated so that the reader knows that they're working together as an adjective. Besides the compound adjectives you just heard, other examples of compound adjectives are well-known. This is a well-known song. And full-time. I'm looking for a full-time job. Compound adjectives provide a concise and descriptive way to modify a noun, often conveying a specific quality or characteristic. Today we're going to cover 15 compound adjectives that are commonly used to describe people. Now knowing and using compound adjectives will help you to express yourself more precisely and fluently, but of course Simply having a large vocabulary doesn't make you fluent. And so if you would like to know about the effective strategy that I use to help my students reach English fluency, then come and take part in my free 90 minute fluency masterclass. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can see when the next class is running. Now, let's boost your vocabulary. Number one, absent-minded. This means forgetful or lacking attention to detail due to having a preoccupied mind. Oh, I forgot to bring the tickets with me. Honestly, I am so absent-minded at the moment. I'm surprised I don't forget my own name. The second vowel in the word absent is pronounced as a schwa. So we have absent rather than absent absent. Repeat it after me. Absent. Absent. In the compound adjective, the T is dropped. So we have absent-minded. Absent-minded. Next on the list is bad-tempered. This means easily irritated or quick to anger. Oh, my sister's bad-tempered husband cast a shadow over the entire celebration. For this one, I want to focus on the ending, tempered. We have the ud sound, tempered, bad, tempered. Moving on, we have big headed. This means having an inflated sense of one's own importance. So you think you are more important than you are, like to be arrogant. I want to hire the young celebrity but he's so big-headed and egotistical. Next, easygoing. This means to be generally relaxed and tolerant. <laughs> it helps to be easygoing when you're working with kids. They're often noisy and messy. Now the S in easy is pronounced as a Z. So don't pronounce it as easy going, but as easy going, easy going. Next we have good tempered, opposite to bad tempered. Good tempered describes a person with a pleasant and agreeable disposition. Most people think Rottweilers are dangerous, but in my experience, they have always been sweet and good tempered dogs. Moving on, laid back. This means to be relaxed, not tense or stressed. I love eating in this restaurant because it has a lovely laid back atmosphere. With this adjective, the D at the end of laid is not released. Your tongue tip moves up to the D position on the roof of the mouth, d -d -d -d, but doesn't release the D sound. Instead, your lips close ready for the B of back, lay back, lay back. Next, narrow-minded. If you are narrow-minded, then you are unwilling to consider different ideas or opinions. You're intolerant. My manager doesn't understand the benefits of diversity in the workplace. I am surprised that he was promoted into the management team when he has such narrow-minded views. 
When saying the word narrow, avoid tapping the R sound. Float the tongue in the middle of the mouth to create this steady sound. Err, narrow, narrow, narrow-minded, rather than narrow, 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 narrow. We don't want that. Opposite to narrow-minded is open-minded. This means you are willing to consider different ideas and opinions. You are open. You're receptive to new experiences. She was an open-minded teacher who encouraged her students to think critically and explore new ideas. Moving on, we have self-centered. This means excessively focused on oneself selfish. A self-centered person will only think about themselves. They will put their needs before the needs of others. You shouldn't spend all your money on new clothes and nights out with friends if you can't afford to feed your children. This sort of self-centered behavior makes you look like a bad parent. The ending of this compound adjective is ud, centered, centered. Self-centered. Also note that you will see a variation in the spelling depending on the country. You may see centered ending with E R E D. Next we have self-assured. This basically means confident in one's own abilities or qualities. The self-assured athletes perform better overall in competitions than the nervous newcomers. Ignore the letter R in assured and pronounce it as assured, self-assured. You may be able to notice that the double S is pronounced as a sh, self-assured, self-assured. Next, we have strong-willed. This means to be determined, resolute. My strong-willed toddler is a handful now, but I am confident that he will achieve whatever he wants in life. Here, the NG can sometimes be mispronounced as a N sound, a single N, with the front of the tongue touching the roof of the mouth, N, rather than the back of the tongue creating the NG. So don't say strong, say strong, strong, strong-willed, strong-willed. Next, we have thick skinned. This means that you are not sensitive to criticism or insults. You're able to withstand adversity. Politicians need to be thick-skinned as they often face a lot of criticism. The TH here should see the tongue placed between the teeth. Thick, thick, thick-skinned. Moving on, we have tight-fisted. Someone that is tight-fisted is unwilling to spend money. A fun synonym of this is stingy. Don't be tight-fisted all your life. You can't take your money with you when you die, so you may as well enjoy it. Live a little. And there are some silent letters here to try and confuse you. We have tight, tight, tight-fisted. Next on the list is two-faced. Two-faced means deceitful or hypocritical. You behave one way with certain people, but contradict yourself with others. Like if you're complaining about Jerry, saying how much you hate him, but then smile and behave like his friends when you see Jerry. All right, Jerry, then you are two-faced. Do not trust anything she says to you because she is so two-faced. Next, we have well-balanced. When describing a person as well-balanced, it means they have a stable, harmonious disposition. They are mentally and emotionally stable. Tina has always been a positive influence within the group. She is just a nice, well-balanced young woman, always willing to get involved and support everyone. Now, if you were to choose two compound adjectives to describe yourself and how you're feeling today, which two would you choose? Let me know in the comments below. Now, these are commonly used adjectives, but you can also use slang terms to describe people, like the words I cover in this lesson. Did you see that one? If not, then check it out. Until next time, take care and goodbye.